What do you think are the most common sorts of mistakes folks make when working with notifications? Oh, that's a really good one. I think the one one mistake is when you have your you know your app and you, your app first launches and I'm a new user to your app. If you give me the notification prompt within the first like two seconds, I don't even know what your app is yet. Like, I, give me some time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's important also to give information on why you want to send me notifications. What type of notifications? you know, are you going to be sending me? And Apple allows us as developers to customize that message. So when they get a prompt, right, for allowing notifications, you can tell them what type of notifications you're going to send or like why you want to send notifications. So making sure that you actually take the time to put that information in there so that you're making it clear to the user what you're going to be sending them or, or why, right? I want to know why you want to send me notifications. Um, and then I think after after that, if the user opts into a notification and then you start just bombarding them, right? You just start bombarding them with notifications of all types and kinds. Um, that's not good at all, right? Mm. Being really thoughtful about how often you're sending notifications. So I really like the example you use with Delingo. It's like after five days, they sent you not or however many days they sent you notifications. They say, Hey, this is going to be our last one. We understand that, you know, you may not be interested. So, so thinking about how you can customize your notifications to take into account, have they engaged with it? Or when was the last time I sent a notification, right? If you're doing local notifications, you can do that right from the app. When's the last time you sent a notification? You keep track of that date. Um, if I send them a notification today, probably shouldn't send them another one, right? <laughs> um, so things like that is making sure that you're really taking that user, when they press allow, they're trusting you not to bombard them, not to, you know, send them notifications every hour or whatever, making sure that you're really being thoughtful about how often you're sending notifications and like what types of notifications. It should be the same type that they agreed to sign up to. Mm. Once again, I want to backtrack here because there's just nuggets flying out left, right and center. <laughs> Let's slow down and go into some more detail here because you've just mentioned a number of awesome things. All right. First up, you know, if you if you ask for push permission straight away, you're gonna just say no. And of course, we all do the same thing because it, 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 it's it's, yep. it's, a, it's a big trust. Yes, please hit me with yep. your spam. Is what we're saying without any further knowledge, right? And we don't yep. want that. And what I've seen done very effectively is um, point of use requests. So the app doesn't ask for push, and use it doesn't ask for push doesn't ask push, and then a week goes by and you try a feature, and it goes, well, this thing needs push, so now let's ask yep. for push. And you're like, okay, I wanted that feature, so I'm gonna actively choose push, because it, it matters. We actually want push to be enabled for the things we care about. And also I've seen very effectively done is folks having a like a pre-permission screen shown. Listen, you've asked to push to yes. be shown. This is what this means. Da, 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 da. Are you sure? Yes. And then the Apple dialogue appears. Because if you say no to the Apple yep. dialogue, it's basically a block on push. You've missed your chance. Yep. If they say to no to your dialogue, you can show that again later on when they want X, Y, Z feature. They can then say, now it means push. So both of those, I think, are, are better ways of, of handling push and hopefully increasing push opt-in which is a big thing presumably yeah a hundred percent i think those two are great really 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 great examples especially the having the pre-prompt screen because if you have your own pre-prompt screen then you can disseminate as much information as you want right uh, an alert is pretty small so you can, you don't want to put all the text <laughs> yeah you don't want to put all your text into the alert so if you have a pre-prompt screen um that could be really powerful and allow you to really get that information clearly to the user. And then if you are an uh, app that only has notifications for one particular feature, yeah, that is a really great point. Like only then show the prompt when they interact with that feature for the first time. Hmm. You also mentioned about bombarding the user with messages, which the underlying question there is, I know it's hard to answer, but for, for non-chat based stuff, how much is too much or how little is too little? Because you don't want the user to forget about you at the same time. But also, you don't want to yep. don't want to spam them saying basically, please delete me because that gets you nowhere as well. So, what is a sort of a healthy level of push for non messaging based app? Do you think? I honestly think once per day. 
I you I don't think a, a app that's like a non chat app or something should be sending more than one notification per day unless I've opted into that. So for example, like a news app, right? If you're a news app and I have alerts set, send me all you know notifications for this particular topic or if, if there are articles on this thing, send me all the notifications. Okay, there happen to be three articles that day on that topic. Okay, that makes sense for you to send those notifications. But that should only happen if the user has opt, opted in. So if you're sending multiple, multiple notifications per day, but they haven't opted in on like setting those preferences, I don't think you should do that, right? You can send one notification and then maybe, and in that notification, you could say something like, if you like to receive more like this, go to your, your notification setting or something like that. You don't need to send them more than one per day if you're if you're not an app like a chat based or something like that, um, unless they've opted into it. Once again, amazing nuggets being just blasted out there. When they respond to your pushes, <laughs> if they find one, this one, they like this one, they open this one. At that point, you can say, hey, do you want more like this? So you can scale up to the day they find the point that works for them rather than the sort of, you know, uh, releasing the hose of push messages all over them and then making yep. them shut down your <laughs> app or, or even worse, delete your app. Yep, exactly. It's always better to scale up and, and allow them the power to opt in because people are more likely to, you know, feel like, oh, wow, like, I like, you know, I like this. They're asking me, you know, they're asking my permission, right? Versus if you just go ahead and bombard, they're like, what the heck? I didn't say I wanted this. Yeah. One thing I would throw in here for folks who are listening uh, is a, a lovely thing you can do is you can detect whether push is enabled or not. So they said no to you previously. You can say, um, this folks, by the way, you've got push turned off, which means we can't tell you about amazing offers in your area, or whatever it is you're actually trying to push them with. Yep. You can detect that afterwards. So you haven't got to do everything all up front. You can later on say, oops, push disabled. So you're missing out on great news about soccer, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. 